Today I want to demonstrate finding and fixing deadlocks using GDB. To start with, let's take a look at this program that partially implements the office hours assignment. As the program begins, we'll see it start and create 17 threads for the students. Some of the students enter the classroom, and then things stop. We can see fairly quickly we've run into a deadlock. So to start debugging this program, we're going to compile it with the debugging information that GDB needs to help us out here. So we're going to use the dash G option. Okay, now that the program's ready to debug, let's start GDB by typing GDB and the program name, in this case office hours, and hitting return. Okay, GDB starts up and it's you can see it's a command line interface. Okay. It's rather stark. It's it's not very inviting, and it's you know frankly it, it could uh, it could be a lot more user friendly. So let's put it into a slightly different mode by typing Control X Control A, and that'll open up a basically it'll split our screen into two windows. Uh, we'll get a source listing in the upper window, and then our our command prompt at the lower. So we can uh, we can type list and get a listing of our of the program we're currently debugging. Okay. So now that we're ready to debug, let's start our program by typing run and following run with any command line options our program needs. In this case, we need the data file. So you can see we already started getting some additional information coming out of GDB. We have a list, basically a notification when new threads start and then the identifier uh, of that thread. OK, so our program's deadlocked, which is good. It behaved the same way inside the debugger as it did outside the debugger. So type Control-C, and it'll return us to the GDB prompt. Now we're going to type where to, to display the call stack of the current thread of execution. You can see from the call stack that we're in the main thread and main is waiting on a pthread join call. So for our program, this is correct behavior, right? Because main spawns all the threads, the threads do all the work of entering the professor's office and leaving, and all main is doing is it's waiting on pthread join for waiting for all those threads to finish. So let's take a look at the threads instead, because that's going to be where our deadlock's occurring. So to look at the current threads in our process, we type info threads. Here you can see a list of all the threads in the application and where they're halted in the command stack. We see thread 1 here, of course, was main, and it was stopped on the pthread join. A lot of the other threads are stopped in a uh, call to do futex wait. Okay. Let's look at one of those. Okay. Let's change our focus to thread 19 by typing thread 19 and hit return. That'll switch us over to that context. And now let's type where to get the call stack of that thread. You can see my, my terminal is getting a little ugly. So I'm going to clean it up by typing refresh. So our call stack for our thread 19 now shows what it's waiting on. And we can look and see here in frame 2, it's actually on a sem wait call. And that call we made in class A enter at line 140 of office hours. So let's switch over to that frame by going by typing frame and the number, in this case frame 3. And we'll refresh again. So there we can see the line that we're that this thread is currently blocked on. It's blocked on a sem late for the class seat semaphore. It's not a problem for this code right now. I'm using the, the semaphore with a value of three to, to guard you know, the, the three seats in the, in the office. So I would expect the majority of the threads to be stopped waiting on that semaphore. So let's go back and let's look at the other threads that weren't stopped at this point. And we can see we have three threads here on a lock wait call, threads four, five, and six. So let's look at thread four. And let's look at its call stack by typing where.
and we'll refresh it again just to clear clean things up. Okay, so now looking at frame two of thread four's call stack, we can see it's on a mutex lock call. In fact, it's on a mutex lock called from class leave on line office or class A leave on office hours line 195. So let's move over to frame three and take a look at that. Once again, refreshed, cleared up. So we're trying to lock break mutex, but we've blocked here. And we blocked for quite a while, right? Because we, we stopped for long enough to notice that we had a deadlock. So something's happening with this mutex. So what we can do is we can use GDB to figure out what thread owns the mutex by printing out the, the data members of this mutex. So we're going to type p and break mutex, which is the name of the variable. And we could see one of the one of the data members of this mutex is owner. And its current owner is thread 18084. So there's our guilty party. So let's take a look at our threads. Let's find 18084. You notice we go right from 18083 to 18085. So the thread that owns that mutex is no longer running. So what has happened here? The thread has called leave. It started to clean up, but it didn't finish cleaning up. It kept that mutex. So let's list class A leave and take a look at it. As we see on line 195, we call mutex lock. 196 and 197, we set some variables. 199, we host on the semaphore, and then we exit. We never unlocked that mutex. So that thread that owned it locked it and then left. So let's fix that. Let's quit out GDB by typing quit, and then let's look at office hours on 195 there and yeah there is our mutex unlock that's missing so let's put this in let's recompile the code and let's run it all right so as you can see, we, we are now progressing farther along than where we were uh, before we made that fix. So we have cleared this deadlock. Now, there's quite a bit of functionality we still have to add to the program, but we'll take it step by step. Uh, hopefully this video help, will help you find those elusive deadlocks in your code. Good luck.